Hi, and welcome to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. I'm Bob Birch. Great to have you along today as uh, we're going to talk with Dr. Chelsea Arns. Uh, Chelsea is the Specialty Livestock Youth Education Specialist with the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. And uh, Chelsea was a guest uh, for the podcast that was actually recommended by Paul Hill at Utah State University Extension, who had seen some of the work uh, that's being done around Arkansas Livestock 4-H on Snapchat and other social media channels. And we wanted to talk to Chelsea about that today and kind of learn more about what they're doing with social media in Arkansas. So welcome to the podcast, Chelsea. Thanks for having me. Uh, It's great to have you along. Why don't we start with um, just sort of your overall strategy. Do you guys have sort of a a thought out strategy for how you use social media for Arkansas Livestock 4-H? Um, Yes and no. So it's all thought out in my head, not anything necessarily written on paper, which probably should be. But um, the strategy kind of just goes around what's going on in the realm of the livestock world in Arkansas. So, for example, if we start at the beginning of the year, um, there's not a whole, whole lot going on, but maybe some jackpot shows. And so I started creating um, monthly list of jackpot shows and then would share them on social media and then along with that anytime we're out and about doing something we'll post on that so it kind of goes as far as as our year goes kind of goes jackpot shows then we hit summer where it's a lot of clinics and showing and grooming and fitting and how do we do it and then we get into fall where it's county district and our state fair actually starts Friday so um, it kind of just kind of goes along the year but then on top of that you know last week was national 4-h week and so we're always trying to put in little pieces as we go and then if I start feeling like there's not been a lot going on as far as social media I try to jump in and do something whether it's post a livestock motivational quote or if it's a throwback Thursday or something just to keep it going because I don't ever want it just to be dead so so um I found uh, Arkansas 4-H, Livestock 4-H on, on Instagram and connected on Snapchat or the other social media channels that you're using besides Instagram and Snapchat. So Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and then I have a personal Twitter account, but I use it for professional purposes. So, um, but it's not titled Arkansas 4-H Livestock. It's just me personally. So, so how do you, I'm uh, you know, this is a question we get all the time where we talk about social media from, from listeners is, you know, how do you manage all of that? That's a lot of channels. <laughs> it is very tedious. <laughs> um, the nice thing is that Instagram and Facebook are very well integrated. And so if I post something on Instagram, I can just click a button and it automatically goes to Facebook. The only time it gets a little frustrating is when maybe you tag somebody on Instagram and then you post it on Facebook and you got to go back in Facebook and post them according to their Facebook or if they don't have one. So that's the only time it gets a little rough. Um, I don't typically go ahead and push the Twitter button on Instagram, even though I could just because of that same reason and because on Twitter, the photo, it's just a, an Instagram link. It's not the actual photo. So um, a lot of times I'll just go in and just copy um, my message and then edit it how I need to so it'll fit in those 140 characters on Twitter. Um, but I usually do Twitter solely and then Instagram and Facebook, I can usually link up. Um, the only thing that I do differently maybe is I don't necessarily always hit the Facebook button when I'm in Instagram because as we all know if you start just hounding Facebook they're eventually just going to stop following you Um, and so it's very important that you're careful on how many times you're posting and things of that nature so on Instagram I'll post 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 because that doesn't it it doesn't really matter as much um, as Facebook, if I post, 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 people are going to get tired of it. So I'm a little bit more strategic on what I'm posting on Facebook. So is it, is it just you posting on all of these accounts? It is. (laughs) I do it all, (laughs) which is basically a full-time job. It seems like. (laughs) What are your goals? Like what are, what are you trying to accomplish in, you know, keeping up the, the social media channels? My goals are 
to A, be informative and to let people know what's going on and what opportunities there are available to them. I believe that sometimes there's a disconnect there. And if I'm able to say just as something as simple as here are the jackpot shows that are going on this month, at least it's all in one place because they don't have to go to Arkansas Cattlemen's Association website and they don't have to go to the other different sanctioning sites, you know, whether it's sheep or hogs, it's all in one place. And so this acts as one platform form for them to go to and find out information and then on top of that I just want to give recognition where recognition is due and so we have you know we're a little bitty tiny state but we have got some top-notch young people and animals that come out of this state and so when they go and they win their junior national show I want everybody to know that and everybody should know that so it's kind of twofold for me and in being an informative place but also being a place to recognize people as well so you know to play devil's advocate a little bit why not well just put it all on the website if we're going to put it all in one place why not just put it on a website somewhere um, it's, it's a little cumbersome, uh, especially on, on the way that our website is set up. You have to click, 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 click to finally get to where you're going, whereas this is just a one click and you're there. Um, also, the website isn't necessarily where the people are going. People are on social media every single day, multiple times a day, automatically. Um, that's just something they're there already, whereas a website, it would almost be – I cumbersome to have to go and pull up the website and they're not already there. So I want to hit people where they are already. And if you look at the audiences, who's the ones going on social media? It's typically your younger people, especially on the Instagram and Snapchat platforms. That's where I'm getting the 4-Hers and can actually connect with them. Um, yes, some of them are on Facebook, but I've found that mostly on Facebook, that's where I'm hitting the parents and grandparents. And so it's knowing where my audience is and they're just not on the website. Now, maybe if I made stuff available on the website more, it could be, but it, it, it just tends to get a little cluttered if it's all on a website. So I want to hit them where they already are and they're already on social media. So. Let's talk a little bit about Snapchat because I think that's a platform that uh, a lot of uh, extension people haven't explored. Um, mm -hmm. Why did you decide to jump onto Snapchat as part of your social media strategy? So um, I've, I've personally used Snapchat for several years now and I've, after reading a lot of articles about it and um, kind of understanding where this the young 4-H's are at, that's where they're at. They're on Snapchat. And so once, you know, it's all new. And, and when I had the idea, I approached our communications team to first make sure it was okay. You know, what are any issues that arise? And so they said, yeah, do it. Try it and see it and, and let us know how it goes. And so, and it's something they weren't familiar with. And so I, I started it and, and I'm doing it. And, and what I, I make kind of personal rules, if you will, of what I will or, or won't do. But we've also got a set of guidelines that are posted on our website of, of content that is shared on Snapchat and things of that nature. So we're covered on our end. But I just wanted to use Snapchat because that's, that's where they are. And it's kind of a fun platform um, in that you've only got your 10 second window to use it. and It's only available for 24 hours. So um, it, just, it was something different to try out. And I, I personally really enjoy it because it's one of those things you don't necessarily, you can't be as thoughtful, if you will. It's the more spontaneous spur of the moment. Moment, and that's kind of exciting for for the young people so that's why I decided to use it right yeah I think I think some extension people are going to be um, well, sure, extension people as if they're different some kind of alien race or something but I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure some people are concerned uh, about snapchat just because of what you said you know I, I mean we're used to uh, whether it's on our websites or whatever, having some kind of permanence to our messages and the fact that things disappear and, you know, they can only be looked at for 10 seconds, they disappear after 24 hours. You know, there's no library there. Is that, is that something that you, you supplement that with Instagram then so that you have a record of, of your communications or is it just something sure. that I don't care? I don't, you know. Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, so actually right now I just – 
so our state fairs officially starts Friday, but animals like sheep will start going in tomorrow. And so I just did a couple of snaps here earlier this morning about we're ready for skillathons, are you? And then, you know, just to kind of get some hype there. And then also I just did one about here's some swag, send us some snaps of how your what your finishing touches are on your animals and maybe you'll win some. And just on things like that, I've already had some people snap me back. And so if I think it's something that's really neat, so I kind of use Snapchat as a content curator in a way. And so when a 4 h -er does snap me back and they're like, oh, we're walking our pig and at 7 p.m at night I take a screenshot and then I can either post it individually or as a collage on Instagram and tag all of them and then it's essentially yes so that's my kind of record of, of what happened as far as that little blurb went on snap of my story on snapchat but then it's just another way for them to get recognized on another social media channel which hopefully gets all their friends well i want to be on there too and so get get more followers and more friends and and things and so it's so that way that is one way that i can sort of document it is when i take a screenshot and then i repost it or i just keep it for personal not personal but professional use later on down if i needed a a picture or something then I have it um, now I will say every once in a while I'll, I'll get a snap at randomly at night and it's they're at their 4-H meeting and they wanted to show me that they were there which is totally fine too sometimes I respond and if I do I may just send a, a quick little chat um, sometimes I do snap a photo of me and say awesome or or you know something just to make it personable because i think that sometimes um where we fall a little short is making things personable and you want there to be a face behind the account and that's me and so letting these 4-Hers know who I am, I think is important. I want to be as transparent as I can. And sometimes, you know, you think, well, what are parents going to think? Are they going to be really mad about it? Or, or what are their feelings toward it? Because we hear all of the negative about Snapchat, not necessarily the positive. And I actually had a parent approach me and said, oh my gosh, my daughter just loves Snapchat and all you're doing on it. And so I haven't had any negative feedback. And, and I also, um, how I approach Snapchat is, yes, I've got all of these friends and followers, and all I do is, as they add me, I friend them, and then I don't ever look at their stories or anything, and um, very rarely do I actually snap back to somebody and start a conversation and if I do it's because I'm trying to find out information about the snap that they sent me but I, I make a very big boundary there of I'm I'm not going to go in and look at somebody's story just because I don't want to see something I don't want to see and so that's just my boundaries it's kind of like a almost a one-way street but not really but just a one-way street and that I'm not going to go look at what everybody else is doing. The only other snap stories I look at on the Arkansas 4-H livestock account are like uh, Weaver or Sullivan's or, or another state 4-H uh, Snapchat that they've got going on. I'll go look at their stories because it might give me ideas of things to do as well. And so that's the only time I go in and look. And it's kind of interesting because of that, you know, Snapchat starting out as a messaging app, and I mean, it still functions that way, but as businesses and organizations have gotten involved in it, it's kind of expanding out a little bit. But um, it, it's interesting in that context because, um, as you said, we could set some guidelines for ourselves as an organization to say, you know, I'm not going to look at somebody's stories, even though. We're at, we have the ability to, mm -hmm. but I wonder if the people who are connecting with us on Snapchat um, have the same thought in mind, right? Are they, they're, they might be connecting with Chelsea and not with Arkansas 4-H Livestock. You think um, no, I don't think so as okay. far as the way that I run the Snapchat. So, I mean, I do have a personal Snapchat account that's totally different. Um, but then I have the Arkansas Forest Livestock Snapchat account. And the, and what I'm usually posting on there is, if, like I said, I'm out and about. So, for example, this summer I did a lot of clinics about showing and grooming and feeding. And I, I was fortunate enough, we had an intern in our office this summer, so I'd give her my work phone with the Snapchat on it. And she would take pictures of us doing stuff while we were there and so it's almost kind of like 
almost like a live feed, if you will, while we're out and about and doing stuff and same thing when, when I'm at state fair, this, those, these next 10 days, I'll be on Snapchat taking pictures during all of the shows, skeletons, behind the scenes stuff, just rant, you know, just literally photos of livestock related and then 4-H, 4-Hers as we go through it. But I don't, I don't think the audience thinks this is Chelsea's Snapchat account. It's definitely the Arkansas 4-H Snapchat account. Arkansas Livestock Snapchat right. account. There is right. a separate one for Arkansas 4-H. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how do you go about, if at all, and uh, not everything has to be measured. This is, um, uh, you know, I've worked in this area of, of talking about social media to, to cooperative extension for, you know, almost eight years now. And mm -hmm. um, it, it always comes up. It's like, well, how do we measure this? How do we know if we're being successful or not? Is that something that you think about? And if so, then how do you go about measuring things? Um, I mean, yes and no, because, you know, you're supposed to report your contacts and all of that fun stuff, which technically you can, and they're all considered direct contacts at this point. Um, and you can go in, and if you posted a story right before it ends, you can go in and look and see everybody who's viewed it. So if you wanted to go through and count those up, you could. It gets a little tedious and a little timely. Um, but, you know, for me, it's more or less looking to see, okay, how many people saw this? How many followers do I have? Is it worth it? And I have found that it is because most of my followers are, you know, 80% of them are looking at the stuff that I do post. And, and I think that's a good indication that it's, it's being seen. And so, and then when I get snaps back from 4-Hers, I know that they're interacting and engaging. And so I think it's important to keep, keep going. I'm not necessarily looking at it as, oh, five people saw it today. I need to record that. I'm looking at it as, did we get information out? Did they see it? Did they like it? Did they engage with it? Should we keep going? And so those are the questions I have in my mind. I, yes, we're, we need to record our contacts and we can, it just gets a little bit more tedious with Snapchat since you have to individually go in and record it and think about it before it's over. Sometimes I forget about that part, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you sort of developed some indications or strategies around types of posts? Um, you know, so like one of the things that you just quickly perusing some of your channels, you know, is there's a lot of text over the top of photos. Is that something that is, this is a Snapchat, Instagram thing. This is how people do it. So it's, we're just, you're just adopting to the culture or is there something about, no, we noticed these perform better somehow. Yeah, exactly. The, the later. So the pictures, videos, they perform much better than just strictly text, especially on Facebook. They, people want something to look at and, and there is research behind all of that. And so when I started noticing that, then I thought, okay, I always need to have some sort of picture. And on Instagram, it's a picture platform. You have to have a picture in order to, or a video in order to post something. And so whenever, for example, if there was a deadline, I would find a picture and put the deadline on it. And then that way, if it's shared, if the text or something gets deleted or reposted on Instagram and they delete it, at least the information still on the photo that was shared. So that was the big part for me of always trying to use a photo or a video or something. If I put text over a photo, it's because it's important information that they need to know. And because again, on Instagram, it has to be a photo in order to be on there and sometimes I'm putting dates and deadlines and it's not necessarily a photo of somebody. It's just something I created in Canva real fast and put on there. So, um, but on Facebook though, I rarely if ever just put text because it's not going to get out there. It's not going to be seen. It's got to be a photo or a video. You mentioned Canva and for listeners out there, if you've not used it, it's just canva.com canvas without the S, you know, C A N V A. Um, is, do you find yourself doing most of your graphics that way or just doing them in app, whether it's, you know, Instagram or, or Snapchat adding, adding sure. text to graphics? <laughs> I've used both. I love Canva. It's so easy to use. Um, and there's so many free features of it. You don't have to pay for it. I really wish there was an app on my phone for Canva. Um, but right now you have, I just use it on desktop. Uh, but it's really easy for me to do and then save the photo and go from there. But I have used the 
some apps that are like font candy or something where you can put the text over a picture. And a lot of times it's because I'm out in the field and I said, Oh, I meant to post this today and hurried up and made something real fast to do. Um, I also like all of the different ones that Instagram has, such as the, the hyperlapse video feature one. I love that one because I can sit there and record an entire class, for example, of, of a market sheet class that may last 10 minutes. And then it just speeds it all up so you can see it. And it's really, really neat. And I actually, the last time I did that, somebody stopped me and said, Oh my goodness, I just downloaded that app because I thought that video was so cool and they're playing around with it. And so, um, I do really enjoy all those apps and, and other platforms such as Canva that we can utilize for social media just makes my life 10 times easier because yes, I could go into InDesign or Photoshop or Illustrator and do it. But if you know those programs, sometimes it can be a little cumbersome and then you got to make sure you export it correctly and, and you've got to have your subscription and blah, blah, blah. Whereas Canva, I just type in a website and go. So I, I really enjoy that feature. Can you talk a little bit about um, the Arkansas 4-H Livestock Photo Challenge and any other sort of, um, uh, I don't know what we would call them, events or challenges or contests that you've used to, I assume, to get engagement, right? You want them yes. to send you stuff back. Okay, so the... 4-H, the Arkansas Livestock 4-H Photo Challenge was this last week during National 4-H Week, and literally, I just wanted it to be a way for 4-Hers to post things and let other people know what they do and kind of show their 4-H pride and spirit during 4-H Week. Um, it, that was my motivation there, and then I did, you know, if somebody sent in something neat, I sent them a little prize, if you will. I've got a bunch of buckets and feed scoops and halters and brushes and livestock related things that have stickers on them. So that way we've got stuff we can send to the 4-Hers that are, are interacting with us. And so we did that just as for 4-H promotion week. Um, I've also done some other ones where we're actually, so, and I'll tell you kind of some of the things I've learned as I talk about this, we have done a, um, social media contest and it's on Insta on Instagram and Facebook currently. And what it is, is there's a hashtag. And so it's hashtag arc 4 H cattle story 16. And it does it for each species. So cattle, sheep, goats, and hogs. And we started it back in May. I th yeah. Back in May. And it's going to end this month after state fair. Don't do something that long. It's not going to work. <laughs> I've learned that. Um, but regardless, when we first started it, we were getting a whole lot of things coming in, and then we kind of had a lag. And then county fairs kind of started up again, and we kind of had a bunch of stuff coming in, and then now there's a lag. And so I think if it's short and sweet, it get to the point and do it and be done with it, it's probably much easier than trying to to do it for several months. Regardless, it's been really fun because a lot of these that were getting in on the contest of, and, and what we we're wanting them to do is show us your story. And we were kind of trying to do start to finish of your 4-H livestock project. And so, you know, I did some themes to kind of help them keep going throughout the time since it was a long time. So we did a selfie one just to start with and send us in a selfie with you and your 4-H project and use the hashtag. And then you could win a prize at the end of that theme contest. And what I did actually, so here's how I integrated Snapchat with all of that. Before I even posted those theme contests or the, the challenge at all, I actually got on Snapchat and said, Hey, send me a selfie with your, with your, animal and you'll win a prize. A, that helped me get people excited. B, it let me get content for when I created graphics for it. I already had 4-Hers and their selfies with their animals. So I had content there, pictures I could use in the graphics. And then I sent them little prizes as we went through on Snapchat. And so before each theme, I would do the on Snapchat. So I'd have some content for graphics and then they would know, oh, I need to go on Instagram or Facebook and go post it as well. So it kind of worked twofold for me there, integrating Snapchat into that all. But I, I've really enjoyed the contest and it's, it's fun for me because I'm kind of an educator here um, at the state office because our communications team, for example, they're not necessarily livestock people and I'm here and I'm, 
talking about stuff and they have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's fun, especially when I get little selfies in or really cute pictures and I'll, I'll text them to the communications people and they, they love it. And so it's been, it's been really fun and an educational tool all the way around, but we've had a lot of people interacting with those and we're, I'm excited of what the future holds now that I've had one under my belt. I know what to do, what not to do and, and keeping it short and sweet is by far the best thing to do. Um, but it's been a lot of fun and I think it's, it's neat because those, those 4-Hers, they're not just doing it in, for, I mean, they're doing it because I asked them to, but at the same time, however many followers they have on their own personal ones, those people are seeing it as well. And so it's also educating the public about what goes on in taking care of an animal and a 4-H project and what it all includes. So I think all the way around, it's just, it's fun and a neat experience for everybody involved. So are there any, you know, social media platforms or projects that that you sort of have on your radar for the future? I definitely think I'll do uh, more contests. I think those are a lot of fun and just doing different themed ones. Um, so, you know, what some of the themes we did were a selfie theme, a feed theme. So what do you feed your animal? And I gave a bag of feed for whoever won that one. Um, you know, what products do you use? You know, just different things and especially around the holidays those are good times to do stuff as well so I think it's I'll definitely I definitely have some things and I keep a running sticky note of ideas as they come along but also on snapchat I love to do the takeovers and let a 4-H'er who's out somewhere that I'm not let them take over the account so for example we had some people who were exhibiting at the um Pork, the World Pork Expo, and they took over Snapchat while they were there, and it was so fun to see, and then I, again, I can take those and post them on Instagram, and so we're getting it on several channels, and I'll do the same thing at State Fair. I'll, I'll have it, and then I'll let other people take over as well because I can't be in all the barns at once. And so if I've got somebody with the hogs and somebody with the sheep and somebody at cattle and, and all of that good stuff, then we're getting content everywhere from one account so I love doing those and I think the the 4-Hers who do them really enjoy them as well um and, the, and at the same time they're also getting new followers for me because I always I, I always tell them now now go add new friends as you're doing this from your contacts that you know so we can build up our our contact list but um yes I, I love doing all that stuff I think that's what the the 4-Hers like because they're engaged and that's where they're at and they know social media so they they enjoy it as well do you know if snapchat as a platform has has anyone outside of 4-h at the university of arkansas aquifer extension service uh adopted it or have you seen it used elsewhere i did know one extension agent um who was a family and consumer sciences that used it doing little recipes or pictures of food on snapchat um there's not too many at, at this point. It's still relatively new for us. And so I, I guess you can kind of say I'm the, um, the guinea pig of it all, trying it out. Uh, but, but the Arkansas 4-H does have one now. I think the 4-H state officers have, have one. Um, but other than that, I'm not really aware of any. I think it, it's slowly coming about. Well, Chelsea, thanks so much for your time, for all your work uh, in this area, and for sharing it with us today on the podcast. Absolutely. I loved it. Thanks again. Dr. Chelsea Arns is the Specialty Livestock Youth Education Specialist at the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Service. You've been listening to the Working Differently in Extension podcast. Great to have you along today. Uh, make sure that you check us out on Twitter. It's at WDNEXT. All the podcasts available on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash working differently and the show notes at bobbirch.com. Our theme music is Noon's Acid by And Nobody Cared. It's used under a Creative Commons license, and you can find it at gemendo.com. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.